Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we're taking a look at some of the large carnivorous birds known as terror birds. The scientific name for terror birds is forest rackets, named after the first terror bird ever found and named in 1887, the forest rackus, which the terror bird here in Ark is probably based on. But it could also just be a generic terror bird. Terror birds lived from 62 million years ago up until 1.8 million years ago. Unfortunately, the popular notion that early humans battled with these enormous birds is not true. Humans did not arrive in terror bird territory until about 1 million years after they disappeared. Almost all terror bird fossils have been found in South America, where they were likely the top predator of the time. There have been fossils found in Africa and Europe, but it's still debated if these are actually terror birds or some other related species. The only confirmed terror bird found outside of South America was Titanus, found in Texas. Titanus was the last of the terror birds, dying out around 1.8 million years ago, although there have been some recent finds in Uruguay as young as 17,000 years old, however these finds are still disputed. Terror birds themselves varied across several different species. Most were fairly small, standing around 60 to 90 centimetres, that's about 2 to 3 feet tall. Others, like Forest Rackus, stood taller at around 2.5 metres, that's about 8.2 feet. All terror birds had broadly the same appearance. They had long, powerful legs, a long neck, a large hooked-tipped beak, and small vestigial wings. The long legs would have given them the ability to cover large distances very efficiently, but it also meant they could reach incredibly fast speeds. Actual speed estimates can vary greatly, but larger members are thought to have been capable of at least attaining 45 km an hour, that's around 30 miles per hour, with more gracile members of the group being even faster. The long necks gave them a great vantage point to spot prey. The terror birds lived and hunted on open plains, able to chase prey with a fast speed, but it's also believed they may have used ambush tactics too. Their long necks and tall profile would have made them easy to spot, giving prey a chance to run before the terror bird was close enough. It's likely they would have waited on the edge of an outcropping of trees, staying hidden and then using their superior speed to surprise its prey. The hooked tipped beak is a feature seen in most predatory birds as an aid to feeding, allowing them to tear off chunks of meat. But the terror birds took this to the extreme. The hook tip is very large and it's believed that it was used as a stabbing weapon. Scans of the neck and skull show it to be very strong at withstanding downward motions. This information, together with the height advantage the bird would have, meant it could have delivered strong downward stabs against its prey's spine or back of the head. The terror bird would have been able to deliver enough power to cause paralysis or death with a few quick and nimble strikes. It could then also use its powerful legs and large talons to deliver more strikes or simply pin its prey while it using its hooked beak to tear off bite-sized pieces of meat. The scans of the skull also show that it was weak to side-to-side -side movements. This means that it would not have shaken its prey side-to-side -side like some predators do. Instead, if it was a smaller prey item, it may have lifted it up and smashed it down on the ground. This method of killing is seen in modern Saima birds often considered to be the terror bird's closest living relatives. This method of killing is also very efficient at breaking the bones of the prey to allow it to be swallowed whole. The terror bird, like the ostrich or the emu, was flightless. Its wings were much reduced in size, although here in Ark the terror bird is capable of a sustained glide that is purely a gameplay mechanic and would have not have been possible in reality. Although the Seriema birds are about the same size as smaller terror birds and have been known to take small flights and nest in trees, it is not known if smaller terror birds were also capable of this. The beak of the terror bird was completely hollow, and while this could be taken as a weight saving feature, it has also been interpreted as a resonating chamber. If this interpretation is correct, then terror birds may have called out to one another by closing their bill hard against the skull with the sound of the impact resonating inside this chamber. Along with this, scans of the brain case have shown that the terror birds had good hearing, able to detect a wide range of frequencies, and this may back up the resonating chamber theory. These scans also showed an underdeveloped sense of smell, so it's likely that the terror bird relied on vision and hearing to track prey. This also means it was unlikely to have scavenged, as it would be unlikely to have been able to smell out a carcass. 
As mentioned earlier, the terror birds died out around 1.8 million years ago. Leading up to this time, there had been extensive volcanic and tectonic activity, as well as falling sea levels. This created a land bridge between North and South America. The formation of this land bridge had a profound effect upon the world, disrupting ocean currents and migratory routes of animals like whales. But the most significant development for the terror birds was that they were no longer isolated from the rest of the world. This triggered the event now called the Great American Interchange, which saw new predators such as the saber-toothed cat Smilodon establish a presence in areas where the terror birds had previously been the dominant predators. The new predators now spreading into South America were able to compete with the terror birds for the same kind of prey. Another factor that affected the terror birds was the South America's steadily changing climate. The rising Andes Mountains that run down the eastern side of South America triggered most of the rainfall to fall on them, as clouds rise over mountain ranges changing air currents and pressures trigger rainfall. This resulted in other parts of South America becoming much drier, with forested scrublands becoming arid steppes and open savanna. Not only would this change the kinds of herbivores available, terror birds would have found themselves very exposed and not able to use cover to hide their tall forms. Even fast running predators don't have much of a chance of catching prey if the prey can see them coming at a distance. It would mean at the very least that terror birds would have had to expend a greater amount of energy in killing prey, reducing their efficiency and making it harder to compete with new predatory rivals. The attrition of these two factors combined is probably what saw the downfall of the terror birds. Well that's all we have for this week, thank you for watching the video and as always I hope you've enjoyed it and you've learned something new. If you did, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below and I hope to see you next time here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.